This looks fun. So I wanted to preface this uh, video with uh, a little bit, explore a little bit more about the community, um, just the idea of that. Um, if you are ready to start looking into these things, uh, different ways of living, um, going about what we are doing in different ways or not doing what we are doing at all and living in harmony with, with things, again, living a more natural lifestyle. can look into different ideas with like eco-villages and those kinds of communities. There's a lot of uh, awesome ideas that people are doing. Uh, several different types of uh, styles of these communities or little eco-villages even. And also, it would probably be a beneficial idea to start looking into the proper way of uh, collecting and using different types of herbs, just what's naturally available to us. Like, uh, start learning about your local wild herbs. I don't like that word. It's that's that's what they're called, wild harvested. Uh, so that whenever you can go out into like a more forested area, uh, you'll be a little bit more knowledgeable. And then uh, you'll realize that there's there's really no need. Uh, there's no war on hunger. Like whenever you go out into a forest and you realize the plants that are around you and how much of it is edible, what parts of it are more nutritious than others. Uh, that goes along with the certain times of season. The nutrients are gonna go more towards the roots in the colder seasons and then wanting to fruit and to collect light and energy in the upper part, in the leaves, and in the fruits during the warmer seasons. But, uh, yeah, you, after you do this for a while, you, you step out into nature and it's like a uh, uh, free uh, garden salad, just available and just in abundance. And then also uh, different materials to use in house construction and building. Um, all types of different ideas and, and theories out there and things that people are doing. And one of the things that I really am drawn towards is uh, working with cob. I find it like uh, combining architecture and uh, sculpture and just instead of building corners you know and being boxed in uh, making things more rounded utilizing uh, certain patterns that's all throughout nature and even inside the human body uh, certain geometrical themes and uh, patterns and then also just you can you can build a natural fireplaces and natural like ovens and uh, it's, it's quite simple to do uh, there's a lot of good stuff on YouTube you can find about stuff like this and I mean this also goes into something I wanted to talk about which is uh, uh, a certain time of the year people or certain themes come up again and people 
get all into prepping and, and everything, which uh, I'll kind of repeat what a lot of people say about that is uh, do whatever feels best for you, like in the moment. Uh, also realize if you're getting worked up and what feelings you're acting upon. How clear <laughs> that message is. Or you might end up with a whole uh, storage room of uh, bug out bags and whatnot and supplies that uh, have been sitting there for years. Which, I mean, to each their own, maybe. Hopefully, uh, everyone finds a way to utilize everything that they feel the need to prep with or gather or uh, take the necessary steps that they feel for them and the ones that they are around because it's going to be a little bit different for everyone and, uh, yeah whatever the process is for you just try to enjoy it and uh, do it coming from a place of feeling like you know no matter uh, if you feel like you're doing this like you get the initial urge to prep and you decide to stock up on stuff like allow whenever you're gathering things allow the energy of like well, gratitude but also just just of enjoyment enjoying the process uh, being open with it don't keep it like boxed in like oh I need to get this and then this and this and this Keep it flowing, because you never know, like, uh, the paths that we're going to go down, the things that life's going to throw at us. So, just realize that, you know, if you are prepping, you're gathering stuff, taking necessary, or what you think is necessary, uh, precautionary steps. Just, uh, enjoy the process. Try to, try to come from a place of, uh, love and enjoy enjoying what you're doing instead of fear and panic it's the main message there but also uh how i view prepping how a lot of us do and, and it's happening like with a lot of people anyways regardless is uh the inner prep i think that's that's where the real prepping is uh prepping your mind uh re-educating yourself about some of those things I was talking about, with like the natural herbs, all the uses, all the medicinal uses, and uh, that's that's where the freedom is. Like the freedom is, is in here. You have to free yourself and realize the programs that we've been caught in and set up with, uh, the things that prey upon our ignorance and literally sucks the life energy away from people and uh, the mental energy enslaves them. Uh, free yourself up here. Prep up here. Uh, yeah. Educate yourself. And that's going to be just a very uh, multi-layered process. So as with what I was saying, I'm prepping on the outside. And it's not easy whenever you are doing your inner work to enjoy the process. But it's it's something that you have to be able to come back to if you fall out of, is, is remembering that you're going through this process. A lot of us are going through this process of uh, reintegration, remembering stuff, and uh, that, that should be celebrated. And, and just realize what you're doing, realize the work that you've done, and it's not always easy to do these things, but it's very necessary to enjoy the process. Have fun with it. Don't box yourselves in. Free yourself in the mind and in the body and the rest will follow. So yeah, that and then the community thing. Um, several different setups and designs. One that I really like is Having a community where like the family unit has their own little 
And, and I think it is a little bit extreme for people, obviously. We're in a world of extreme fear and extreme expressions of polarity. But obviously if someone has, you know, a hundred acres or a thousand acres or a whole shit ton of property and there's all these homeless people, like obviously something's not right with that here. Like we need to come up with a better design for everyone. One that I like is having family units kind of plotted out in their own little area of, of nature and they'll have like their own little forest and their own garden, their, uh, their own pond and uh, their own well. But the forest is going to provide, <clears throat> well, a lot of uh, beneficial stuff for different, with different kinds of trees. Uh, different kind of fruits that you can have, free-bearing fruits, tr fruit-bearing trees, or the other way around, I get freaky with it, and uh, just, you can have certain types of trees to block uh, the wind in certain times, time periods, seasons, uh, protect your garden, allow light to come in, uh, basically, yeah, like, I like to see people get creative with uh, landscaping and, and how they uh, utilize water and light. Because that's really what it's all about, within and without. The water and the light. Understanding uh, the natural cycles and processes and the ways that different plants and animals and fungi uh, react to all these things and how we can coexist with it and benefit from it. And then being that in that natural environment, that's going to, uh, that itself is pretty much going to heal the body of all uh, physical ailments. But uh, you do get on the level of mental, uh, a, lot of, a lot of the stuff that we go through physically, it starts mentally and energetically and then it siphons and filters its way down and finally is expressed in the physical because we've been ignoring it in the other subtler realms until finally it makes itself okay we gotta deal with what you've been ignoring here so even in living in a natural pristine environment if we have some mental stuff going on and we're not paying attention to that then it's going to manifest in some kind of physical way but uh the gardens uh let thy, let thy food be thy medicine. That's everyone needs their own garden so that they can have their own unique medicine. And there's a certain process in planting seeds where you imbue your the information inside your physical body, your DNA, if you want to call it that. The molecular information is uh, held by the seed, and you plant that a certain way. And that, uh, well, I won't go to, to too much about all that process, but basically that allows for the fruit and the plant to gather as much information as it can for that uh, person. And so that, that doesn't just heal the physical body, it uh, nourishes uh, the soul. So yeah, there's just some ideas about some stuff. I will not go too deep into it. And yeah, everyone's going to have their own process of uh, diving into things that interest them or feeling that they need to. But uh, just enjoy the process. Allow these things to come up. Um, bear witness to what happens. It's one of the things I talk about uh, in this video as well. Is uh, whenever you do your inner work, like your outer, your perception of how you perceive things change, and so your outer things around you seem to change uh, just as much as what is changing inside. So a lot of times once we do a lot of cleansing work, deep cleaning, we will uh, just naturally go into um, material and into 
go into gnosis, go into learning about things that uh, are, are true and pure and clean. So yeah, hope you enjoy. Uh, thanks. Okay, so if you guys haven't already, check this guy's uh, stuff out. It's, uh, his channel is Dreamy Dreamland with Sensei Al Bob. He's from, uh, probably the best storyteller, uh, Griot, uh, I've ever come across. Uh, very genuine, uh, wise owl. And as with everyone, there's, uh, I mean, we all have bits and pieces, so we're all trying to put our pieces of the puzzle together to help each other create a more holistic and clear, accurate uh, representation and vision, um, accurate story of uh, what's really going on here, what has been really going on. And so there's, there's going to be a lot of levels of the bullshit that we got to dig through, a lot of layers that we have to peel off to get to the core, to get to the truth, the truth of the matter, to get to the meat of it, the heart. And uh, this guy is a... Uh, perfect representation of um, having gone through some of the most uh, amazing uh, experiences that a human can go through in this here and now, but also uh, still uh, have s certain belief systems attached that, uh, I don't know, this, this is why when we're all here and helping each other so that we can come to understand the truth, the, the ultimate truth. But I mean, ultimately, there's only so much that we're going to really be able to comprehend and integrate. And so we kind of just have to realize, okay, what is the most important thing or things that we can be focusing on right now to uh, not only so that we can survive this, what, what we're in right now and what's going to happen very, uh, very soon, um, but what's, what's going to help us come together, what, what is the most important thing here, uh, what, what are the kind of people that you want to interact with, uh, the kind of people that you want to avoid, you know, when, whenever that quote unquote shit hits the fan, like, there's going to be those people that, uh, most people, uh, yeah, whenever the shit hits the fan, you know, you, you, you see, uh, how they're going to handle stuff and uh, what path they're going to take if they're going to step up and take responsibility and do what's right or if they're going to allow fear to take hold and fall back to their safe nets and what has been set up for them um, where they have been programmed to believe uh, the things that are helping them. So yeah, this is uh, something about uh, the Twin Towers here. Um, and yeah, this is... <clears throat> I mean, it's not really stuff that I even think about it e anymore at all, but like, what, uh, what Owl presents here, I, I mean... It's pretty, 
I don't think he's being <laughs> disingenuous or anything, and I don't think he's making anything up. And even if he is, you know, uh, what's it, what's it really matter? Because it's it's all uh, it all comes down to what you get out of the contemplation of the ideas, uh, the clarity and purity of the image that comes into your mind, and what you do with that. And it's all it's all up to. what you feel in, in a message and what you take from that and what, what, where you go with that. Okay, so yeah, I'll play this. But anyway, so there I was, and you know, I'm working on the World Trade Center uh, on a green leaf bender at that six inch pipe, and I was intimate with every freaking floor of the South Tower. And the South Tower was a mirrored image of the North Tower. When there was, and both those buildings were manufactured in factories and stuck together like a tonka toy. Um, because if they built it like they built other skyscrapers, they'd still be building it today. And that's where no hub uh, was invented and a whole bunch of other technology. And so um, <clears throat> what, that, what was special about the World Trade Center was that each floor was an acre big. And it had no columns supporting the floor above and below up. And what it did have was a center core where the elevators and pits and stuff were. And they were like 80 feet by 80 feet. It was like a separate skyscraper inside the World Trade Center. And the exterior walls were these um, boxed beams that were manufactured and they stuck together. And when they got stuck together, they were first riveted, then welded, then blue bar was put in, and concrete was poured into it. So no way did the aircraft even get inside the building because those things were like, that's what was holding up. And each of those floors were four foot thick. And they were connected to the center core and the outside wall for four feet. And inside them they had tons of steel and lee bar that was like, you know, six inches thick. You know, and like mats of it, like five mats. And then they had aircraft cables, big, thick aircraft cables, the stuff that holds up the George Washington Bridge, woven back and forth and back and forth between the outside wall and the inside uh, core. And then they poured pre-stressed concrete, four feet thick. No way does that, no, right? I mean, they weren't just like kind of tacked on to, no. They were integral parts. But the whole building was being um, basically held together by the force coming from gravity. Because the more it pushed down, the more everything got stronger. So no way could jet fuel burning at uh, you know 400 degrees, you know, you know, cut through um, steel that was 24 inch. You know, those I beams were 20. You know, what an I beam is. You know, bing, 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 looks like an I. Well, the steel was 24 inches thick. And they had about 20 of them going this way and 20 of them go this way to the inside core. No way does, does even if the airplane could get in. Guys, a commercial airliner is like a thermos bottle with wings. I don't know. Go look up on NASA's webpage and, you know, National Aeronautics and Aeronautics in Space. And uh, NTSB, look at there. They do all these experiments where they crash 707s, 747s, 767s, 740s, you know, all those airplanes. They crash them on purpose to see how they're going to react so they can figure out the best way to get people out before they burn to death. And so when you see an aircraft crashing, and there's loads of websites of airplanes, of those large commercial, and the 767, 767, which hit allegedly hit the buildings, they're not like unbelievably strong. And the other thing about what makes it kind of unconceivable, that these aircraft were flying at about 500, allegedly flying at 560 miles an hour. Now those aircraft can fly that, but the, the thick air would have ripped the planes apart before they even got to the building. And I had a friend of mine who was a general, you know, two-story general in the Air Force, who was like Chuck, he, you know, he was a better pilot than Chuck Gable. And he said that no one could fly those planes going that fast 
between the buildings in Lower Manhattan. He said, um, and that he said to me, first of all, the the resistance of the uh, friction of the air on the wings would rip the suckers right off. And he said, no way could those airplanes, because the thermos models go through um, that big steel outside wall. And he said, if it did, it would be like a pencil going through a screen door. You know, it wouldn't take the building down, wouldn't destroy the structural anything. And the other interesting thing is you go online, <clears throat> so I had loads of friends who were policemen and uh, firemen who died there. And loads of friends who were policemen and firemen who survived. Right? And were working, you know, to, you know, did, as they call it, the pit to find these guys. And they found no bodies. They just found like little chunks of people. And the only people that they found totally in bodies were people who jumped out windows from 20, 30 stories you know, above or below um, where the airplane allegedly went through. And 1,200 people, before the buildings came down, for about an hour and a half, they were like raining bodies, smashing onto the um, outside you know, area of around the building. And when they got those bodies and, you know, took them to the morgue, they were burnt, toasted, barbecued, not from fire, but from microwave. They look like hot dogs. So there was a space-based weapon. There's a woman, if you were to, like, Google uh, space-based web, energy weapon takes down uh, World Trade Center 9-11 truth, this woman, Judy, Dr. Judy something, who's, you know, worked on Star Wars, basically says, hey, this is what happened. And that's the only way these buildings could fall at, at, at you know, free fall speed. Because if, even if that plane did go in there, even if the, the fires which, you know, could, you know, no. The only thing that those fires could melt was aluminum, not steel 24 inches thick. And um, if, if that floor fell, the next floor would hold it. And the only way that those buildings could fall is if those floors were falling into floors that were already pulverized. And one of the major things that people said, where was all the stuff? Meaning those buildings just go right into uh, the floor of the ground. I mean, there was, you know, the, the building didn't tip over and take out about 20 other buildings um, on Water Street or you know, didn't take out the, the Bear Stern building, didn't take out uh, um, J.P. Morgan, didn't take, you know. So go Google 9-11 Truth. There's about a thousand different uh, websites that come up. And you'll get a lot of stuff, and some of it will be old pucky. And, but this will be a good vehicle for you to be able to put your dots together. Because another one of these suckers is coming down, again, but... That's why I started the series of 40 Days and 40 Nights. They kind of give you guys a heads up about, hey, what's coming down? So, um, and you have to be able to have a, a lucid conversation about all this stuff. Spirituality, love, 9-11, you know, everything else that's going on. And Donnie Trump. You know, Donnie is, Donnie is no worse than any other of the political ilk. That's out there. The only thing is, he is the ex lax of the body politic, and he is, um, you know, eliminating uh, the colon of, of the corrupt um, politic uh, that has been around for the last 500 years. Start looking at this stuff, start doing your homework, start putting the dots together, start talking to people, start building the community in your neighborhood. Come on together. Oh, one hour, 33 minutes, and 52 seconds. Okay, so yeah. <coughs> That's basically like uh, what I wanted to get at there with the most important stuff is uh, the people. Uh, 
building a community and maybe you don't find yourself within a community and uh, your immediate surroundings where there's a lot of people uh, who are uh, actually able to think for themselves but uh, <laughs> we are out here and uh, the interwebs is helping us uh, connect and realize the humanity within us all and this is constantly something um, I struggle with uh, because of uh, my immediate surroundings my uh, immediate family kind of people I'm, I'm I want to be forced to be around but uh, I have agreed to be around uh, it's just it's all very interesting and I find myself going through uh, different cycles and repeating cycles and uh, the main uh, common theme is always where is my inner state and whenever I'm going through weird stuff on the inside, uh, it's always reflected in, in how people respond, uh, especially certain kinds of people, uh, people that have zero control over their own inner feelings and emotions, and even, for the most part, part their own thoughts. Uh, <coughs> <clears throat> almost over this uh, flim shit uh, for the most part these people they're not even aware of uh, what's happening to them or with them uh, they're, they're just reactionary um, their thoughts reflect uh, their surroundings and the people that they're around and there's very little uh <clears throat> I guess you could say free will because they've given it up uh, to the programming. <laughs> and so uh, it's it's very bizarre some of my interactions uh, like earlier today um, with a couple individuals. Uh, it's I talked to him about, uh, or to be honest, for the most part, um, I just try to avoid certain interactions with, with certain people that I uh, have agreed to be around for uh, my job and whatnot. But whenever, whenever I'm able to kind of just talk, um, whenever I can sense that they are not in an agitated state, just to kind of get something going uh, to remind them, you know, uh, basically of who I am, of what I represent. Um, and, and, and basically it's to remind them that I am not what they think I am because, uh, these certain types of people, they have, uh, an image that they have built up inside of their, uh, minds and that's because of the, uh, well, it's because of the confusion, um, not being able to get someone uh, um, whenever they're presented with information or presented with ideas, uh, they have this response of um, 
immediate agitation. And it's an agitation to truth. Um, it's an agitation because whenever I'm around people, I'm often, I've noticed in my life, I'm like a mirror to people. So I, not necessarily, I don't even necessarily have to say anything, but I'm still reflecting to them uh, their true selves. And so that most people don't want to see that at all because uh, then they'll have to face up to what they've done uh, to themselves. Uh, they'll have to face, face the lies <clears throat> that they've told themselves that they've agreed upon, that they have been fed. And they'll have to continue or begin for a lot of people, begin the process of healing, and oftentimes what that's going to look like for uh, traumatized people, um, they're going to have to have uh, consecutive breakdowns happen. They're going to have to hit consecutive rock bottoms. And I, I've seen this. I, I've, uh, I, I've. I'm, I've been through it myself, so I know I know what it's like to uh, reach a point where uh, well I'll say I'll go ahead and say whenever I first really did my first long liquid fast, uh, that was one of the points where I reached rock bottom. Well, in a hmm, <laughs> in a manner. Uh, uh, so to speak, because uh, on the outside it would appear that way, but on the inside, uh, I knew what needed to happen. So it was a, it was freeing because I, I knew that things needed to be let go of, and I was ready and willing to do this. And so whenever I would talk to people and, and tell them, uh, well, yeah, <laughs> you know, and also whenever we go through things, certain things in our lives, it's interesting to see the kinds of people, maybe people of our past. Or just certain kinds of individuals, reflections really, uh, that will present themselves to us and kind of uh, kind of encourage us to keep going down uh, a certain path, or just be nice little reminders to us. So, uh, whenever I first did my my really long uh, liquid fast, I uh, I was going through, and I mean, this is nothing uh, special by any means, because a lot of us, and especially a lot of us who feel really deeply, we, we go through a lot of uh, a lot of hard times, and this is why it's also important for us to find like-minded and like-hearted people to connect with and realize that we're we're not as alone as uh, it may seem at times. We're never truly alone, but sometimes whenever we feel really down or depressed uh, it can be very lonely especially when whenever you don't have uh, all that many physical people uh, in your life that you can count on or that you can really call like true friends so yeah uh, financially uh, I was uh, in trouble um, my job uh, I, that was, uh, in the air, uh, I, I, I didn't know about job security at the time, uh, my vehicle was, uh, basically breaking down or broken down, um, yeah, just, just, I mean, it was just one of those perfect storm scenarios where everything was falling apart, but then I finally was like, okay, well, what is the thing I do have control over? If I don't have necessarily all that much control over the things that are falling, seem to be falling away from me, like we always have that choice. Do we grab on to the banks and to the rocks or do we just finally let go 
and uh, drift down the stream of love and life and finally start to live. So yeah, that's what I've decided to focus on. Like, what, what do I really have control over here? I have control over my own inner state. And uh, the deeper you go into this, you will find that your inner state is a reflection. It, it's all as within, so without. So whenever you start doing fast and deep cleansing and deep healing work, your uh, outer perception, what you perceive as outside of you, your outer world will, your outer experiences will uh, also shift and change dramatically. But yeah, uh, that's mainly the message here I wanted to share. I wanted to share this, uh, this amazing uh, being here that I've uh, been able to connect with and uh, interact with, uh, engage in the physical as well as uh, all the levels uh, that you can call reality. And basically, uh, his main message here is uh, my main message, which is we have to fight, start finding, stop fighting, start finding uh, what's most important. We have to come back to the heart, come back to the union, uh, the reunion, the communion with like-minded and like-hearted people. And we have to, if we can't, find these communities within our immediate surroundings, we have to start creating these communities. And I mean, this is going to, it, it kind of seems like, and this guy uh, knows the trends as well. He's a trend guy. The trends look like uh, we're going to be thrusted into this like it or not. So, more than anything, this is just a reminder of what you already know, what you can feel what you may or may not be talking yourself in and out of. But stay focused on what what is true, what is real, the heart of the matter, the communion, the reunion, the reigniting of what it, what it really is to be a human and experience love and experience reality on all levels. And that is going to take time and dedication and focus to even start to tap into what that means to experience things on different levels of reality, of going into the dream world, of going into the astral world, of using your imagination again to create the world that you want to create instead of allowing your mind to go along with the script that has been given to you, given to all of us. Now is the time for us to start creating and building communities and it's gonna that's gonna take the form m many different forms here uh, just like a online community um, no matter what the platform is like YouTube whatever um, that's that's gonna be like foundations if not with those immediate people it's gonna give you the groundwork the uh, the experience to know what what is needed and uh, to help remind you of the the energy that's going to be within these communities. And this is going to be an energy of uh, co-creation and love and uh, remembrance of truth. It's going to look a lot different than. Uh, 
the so-called communities that most humans live in nowadays. Because it's going to <laughs> take people out of the box, out of their box homes, out of their boxed mindsets, and reunite people with uh, the truth that is nature, the, the living world. That's, uh, we're always supposed to be in communion with. Then we can start to really remember just how special uh, this place is that we've been lied to about. We've been lied to about everything, but just how special uh, we all are. And can begin to honor that again. <laughs> 